lift your hands and we worship him and say something great to him. The one that was, the one that is, and the one to come, the one called Alpha, the one called Omega, the one called Beginning and the End. The Lord who rules in the affairs of men. The one that has been from ages to ages. The one that has ability to do all things. By him were all things made. By him were all things created. For his own glory. Worship him and I say something to him. If you are glad to be alive here with what happened last year. With what happened. With how COVID took many people to their holy grave. And you are still standing there. Lift your hand and worship the Lord. For you are glorious. You are worthy to be praised. You are the Lord. Upon the throne. The throne. Oh, oh, oh. And all unto you. We lift the voice to say, Hey, you are the Lamb of all the truth. Come on, say, For you are, for, for you are glory. Yeah, yeah, I'm worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb of all the truth. My Savior, my Savior, died for me. My sins are washed away. My sins are washed away. Halle, hallelujah. It's wonderful to know that Jesus died for me. Wonderful. Oh, oh. It is wonderful to know that Jesus died for me. My sins are washed away. My names are written in the book of life. That is the purpose of your coming to church. That is the purpose of your service. It is wonderful to know that Jesus died for me. Wonderful. Hallelujah. Come on, give Jesus a clapping, a shouting. Give him a shout. We are sharing on transformation. And you can't share on transformation and we just be uh, looking, we just be cold. When transformation, transformation is something you can't hide. You can't hide it. It's what every eyes will be able to see. And that's why I'm very glad to tell you that today, the power of transformation will come upon you. There's no way you talk about transformation without power. You don't talk about transformation without fire. One of the character of fire is to bring transformation. When you are not experiencing transformation, you lack power. Only spirit is not stationary. Only spirit is dynamic. And God is dynamic. And you must be dynamic. Jesus said, a man of the spirit is like a wind that is blowing. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know where it's going. That's why at times you don't understand your pastor. Because she's a woman of the spirit. The disciple couldn't understand Jesus. At times he will speak in parable. They don't understand. 
Why was he crucified? He was crucified for what they don't even understand. He said, I will destroy this temple. And after three days, I will do what? They thought it was physical temple. And they said, before this man destroyed this temple, let us kill him quickly. Or knowing that he was talking about his resurrection. Ah, where are you? Your family will experience transformation. When you are not experiencing transformation, you will be bored. You will be lonely. Because you are just surrounded in one single place. And doing the same thing all over and all over again. And so you will not enjoy what you are doing. Today, for those who believe it, you will experience transformation. I will move very fast. And I plead to God. That the Lord will give you simplicity of heart to take this message. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Jesus said, Come unto me. Come. All ye that labor and are heavy lady, I will give you rest. You will have rest. The whole world is looking for rest. Even from COVID-19, we are looking for rest. And the COVID took another dimension. Even COVID is not even stationary. COVID is dynamic. That's why they say variant. COVID is changing direction. And you are already in one direction. Everybody is looking for rest. We pastor, we are looking for rest. How many of you need rest? <laughs> uh, you, will need re you will have rest. Over your family, you will have rest. Over your business, you will have rest. Do you know? Over your children, you will have rest. Some of us, we are enjoying joy in every area. But there are some areas that is taking rest away from you. And the call of Jesus is a call for us to have rest. And look at how Jesus told us how we can have permanent rest. He said, take my yoke upon you. We are not ready to carry any yoke. Life is about sacrifice. In everything, if you want it to work in the ministry that we are doing, so that's why I just kept on mentioning pastor. In the ministry of pastor, sacrifice. I slept late, I woke early. Sacrifice. So that I can be able to preach and touch the lives of people. Sacrifice. For you to have a good life in Christ, you must be ready to lay down some things. Some of you, Christ is residing in you, but it's not presiding. Jesus gave us here. The whole world is looking for rest. Everybody is looking for rest. But come unto me, and I will give you rest. Then he said, I want you to have permanent rest. How do I have permanent rest? There is a process to have permanent rest. He said, number one, take my yoke upon you. Yoke is a symbol of ownership. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Learn. We are not ready to learn. People are not ready to learn. It is here I see people hanging with pastor. I see people hanging with leaders. Sunday school teachers, even when the scriptures say so, they want to turn it. Learn. For I am meek and lowly. What's the meaning? You can't learn except you are humble. Learn. For I am meek and lowly in heart. If you are not ready to learn, you will operate in foolishness. 
and you will have no rest. Because the world cannot give you rest. Every system of the world is not conditioned to give rest. You keep running and you keep running and you keep running. No wonder the Bible says godliness with contentment is a what? It's a great game. Uh, godliness contentment comes from God. It's, it doesn't come from possession. It's from God. The more you acquire, the one you want to acquire, the more you want to acquire, it is when somebody goes into the grave. That's why they say rest in peace. We, through all your journey in life, now rest in peace. I don't know if you are in the house, you will fulfill your destiny. And they put it rest in peace. All right, people. Everybody write it. Why are they now saying rest in peace? Because there is no rest in the world. No rest. It is only God and Jesus that can give rest. Because he is the only prince of peace. The key of peace. It's in his hand. Money can give you. Food can give you. Clothes can give us. I have a privilege of coming here. And I have a privilege of moving around. And I will see, see, different color, different, different manufacturer, different. If you want to take this one, this one will look for you again. You look, want to check this one again. You want to check this one again. I say, God have mercy. <laughs> Somebody will never have rest. That's why they read that Colossians chapter 3. King James said, if it is truly you are risen with Christ. If it's truly Christ is in you. Seek those things that are above. Because your life is hid in Christ. If your life is not hid in Christ, if you rapture, you will remain in the grave. Because your life is hid. He said, therefore, you can just say, mortify, kill, destroy your members that is on this earth. So that you can reign with Christ. If somebody hear me say, big amen to that. Look at what Jesus said. If you want to have a permanent rest, take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. There are many things to learn. On marriage, Jesus wrote it there. Ephesians is there. First Peter chapter 3 is there. Uh, the book of Malachi chapter 2. All the things that Jesus wrote were always doing contrary. We won't get to rest. Learn of me. You have to learn things on every aspect. How do we relate with people? How what reactions? How do we talk? How do the book of Proverbs full? You learn, and then he said, "Because I am meek and lowly, and you will find rest for your soul." Look at what he says in John chapter chapter seventy verse thirteen. He said, "If you know these things and you do them, happy are you." So if you know it, you don't do it, you'll be looking for happiness. But somebody in the house today, may the happiness of God come upon your life. I have to move very fast. There are basic supernatural encounter that you need to have to be able to enjoy full transformation and rest. Number one, salvation is an encounter. See, today, I knew who spoke and I gave my life to Christ. Today I can still see the picture of where I gave my life to Christ. I can still see the picture of the man who spoke. That man that God used for me is not even a pastor today. But I recognize him that he has, he has a crown to claim over my life. I remember that. So when you have salvation, you will know you are saved. Some people, are you saved? I'm trying to be saved. You don't try to be saved. Salvation is an encounter. You can't forget it. And that is why if you are not saved, you are hearing me, or you are under this, this, under this auditorium, give your life to Christ. Salvation is not church going. I was a member of the choir in Anglican church. I was not saved and I was a member of the choir. But the day 
I gave my life to Christ. I knew I was saved. And I went for another water baptism. Where I was deep inside water. And from that 1984, my story has not been the same. You that say, man, you will receive encounter. That's why the scripture says, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. He said, behold, all things become new. It's not you are in Christ. Nothing is new. You are in Christ. Character is not changing. And you say you are in Christ. Remember Jesus said many will come on that day. And Jesus said I will tell them. I know you know you workers of what? Iniquity. For you that say me that voice will not come to you. You have to give your life. A salvation is an encounter. That's why the scripture says First John 5 4. Whatsoever is born of God. Overcome the word. The word. You can't overcome this present word. It's too sophisticated. By your flesh. By your effort. The more you are using head. The more you are going into confusion. These are the things that led some people to go into drugs. Some go into drugs. Smoking. Into drinking. Believing that when I do that. I will remove something. The second day when you wake up. The sorrow will be added. The Bible says who had sorrow. Who had weeping. Who have redness of eyes without a purpose? He said, Who have a sorrow without a purpose? He that spent quality of his life and his time drinking. He can't remove sorrow. Jesus is the only one that came to remove sorrow for us. For whosoever is born of God overcome the world. I'm not talking to everybody, I'm talking to somebody who wants to overcome. You will overcome. Yeah. The challenges you are facing, I say, You will overcome. Your strength is limited. You need Christ. You need the Savior to overcome. For the Bible says it is when you are born of God, we are born of God, not by human effort. Bible says, For by grace you are saved, not by human effort. John chapter 1, 11 and 12. He came unto his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many that believe in him are given power to be sons of God. We are sons by power. We are translated. That's what First Peter 2 9 says. You now become a social generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nature, a peculiar people. Let the peculiar people say, I'm a peculiar person. You are just sitting and saying, I'm a peculiar person. I love the way the woman will do. The woman will say, I'm a peculiar person. You are not like others. If you are like others, last year, you wouldn't be alive here today. Because the mark of the Lord is upon you wherever you go. That is why God has preserved you. If you are preserved, give Jesus a clap of friend, please. Another experience that is serious is the sanctification. Holy huh. Christian, we understand what, what we call sanctification. Sanctification means purification. It means circumcision. When you do physical circumcision, there are places to cut. After you give your life to Christ, the law must be able to circumcise your heart. Because this is the heart of battles. Do you know the result of that? The result of that is Ezekiel 36, 26. I will love you if you give it to me. He said, a new heart will I give unto you. A new spirit. Will I give. He said, I will remove the heart of stone. And I will give you the heart of flesh. Sanctification is an encounter. That's why I say other people can do it. I can't do it. That was separate you. Now listen to this. The first call was the call of Jesus. Come. The second call for your sanctification. You are the one that will visit the cross yourself. That is the Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. 
The first call of Jesus, he called you. When he called us, we still have all the old men there. And he's, I give my life to Christ. But anger is not going, you know, he's still there. Envy is still there. Hatred is still there. But the second call is for you to now go to the cross. That's why Paul said, I am now crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not high, but Christ that what? Liberty in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh. You are now living in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Can somebody say amen to that? You know when Paul was explaining this in the book of Romans chapter 7? He said to will is present. But how to do it I find not. He said that which I love I couldn't do. That which I hate is what I he said, if I do those which I hated and could not do that which I love, it's no more me that do it. But sin that dwelleth in me. That's why you can see Jesus had a running battle with Peter. God wants to use Peter. But carnality is not giving Peter rest of mind. And carnal Christian is the major problem in our various churches. You talk things in the spirit, they will interpret it in the flesh. You are saying we are going this way. They will say this way. They will do things by reasoning. It is by the word of God. Look, I want the product. Of, please give me that Ezekiel 36, 26. It's a very critical. Now you are saved, but the stony heart is still there. Now you are saved. The spirit of lies is still there. Now you are saved. Scheming is still there. Now you are saved. You are not truthful. But you are saved. Look at what he says. That's what will happen when sanctification happens. A new house, a new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you I will give you a heart of flesh. I will remove a stony heart and give you the heart of flesh. That is why it is very difficult for us to forgive. Because the stony heart is still there. God has to remove it. That's why you rationalize forgiveness. But it's not easy. Even when I present this case before God. Jesus has taught us everything. Was it so easy for somebody being nailed to the cross. And see say father do what? Forgive them they know not what? If we tell people that they will tell us that he knows what he's doing. That man knows what he's doing. That woman knows. He said, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. Now, we say, okay, this is Jesus. Now, what about Stephen? In Acts chapter 7, the Bible says Stephen was being stoned. And he looked unto heaven and said, Father, do what? Forgive them for they know not what? What they are doing. I pray for those who say amen. May the Lord give us a sanctified heart. I can't hear your amen very well. What is the product of sanctification? You see that Galatians. That's why Romans chapter 12 from verse 1 say, I beseech you therefore brethren by the message. He's talking to brethren. Not unbelievers. By the message of God that you present your body a living sacrifice. Holy unto the Lord which is your acceptable service. Or reasonable service. Now, when you look at verse 2, he said, Therefore, be not conformed to this word. Please understand that. The whole world wants you to conform. Do not conform to this word, but be ye transformed by the knower of what? It is when sanctification happens, your mind is renewed. You will interpret the scripture the way it is presented to you. You won't finish a service and call it one person and call it another. They are talking about you. It is you that pastor used to preach. You become an interpreter of sowing seed. Evil seed. And somebody who has accepted the message that this message is for me, you now throw trouble into it. And then you go. And I told people, I said, where is the devil living? The devil is not living in a vacuum. The devil lives in men. 
He lives in people. By words, words of suggestions, by words from their mouth. This morning, the issue of sanctification is an encounter. That encounter is what made Daniel proposing in Babylon. Daniel 1 8. He proposed not to defile himself. Yes, I mean, I'm in America, I'm in, I'm in UK, I'm in, I'm in Africa, but I am not going to do what other people say. What? That's what kept us in the gospel till now. We have many ministers that have derailed. We have many ministers that could not wait again and look for other powers. But because we stood our ground, we, I knew where sanctification happened in my life. I knew the encounter. I can't do what they are doing. There must be a clear difference between your life and unbelievers outside. This is why it is very difficult to bring unbelievers to church. Because they don't see difference between our lives and their lives. What they are doing, we are also hot doing it. So what are you telling me? Why, why are you asking me? Why am I asking you? Why are you asking me to follow you? They see, they see a difference. But today, to today, a new fire will come. The third experience is the Holy Spirit baptism. Holy Spirit baptism is an experience. It's an encounter that somebody, you know, as my brother was trying his bed to put everything, something was, was jumping inside me. Holy Spirit is so much dynamic and you need to have that experience. And you realize that when Peter does not have that experience, Jesus cannot define who Peter is. Yes. Peter will say something today. He will say another thing tomorrow. Matthew chapter 16. They saw, they said, Jesus asked them, whom do people say that I am? And they began to say, you wonder that these people have been with Jesus for three and a half years. And they don't even know whom Jesus is. There are people that are in church, they don't even know the vision of the ministry. So when you talk this way, say, like uh, the way we used to do it in our, in our particular church. Like the way they do it, in uh, somewhere. What is the vision? The vision of each ministry is what? Is different. Thank God for the grace I'm here. The vision of Living Spring is different from the vision of the church I come from in Africa. Our visions are different. Some are into evangelistic. Some are into prophetic. Some are into pastoral. Some are into teaching. Our assignments are different. And the moment you follow where you are. Not by comparing. Because the Bible says they that compare themselves with themselves are not wise. When you stay, then the blessing of where you are will just follow you without struggling. Can somebody say amen to that? I told our congregation, I told myself, look, God didn't tell me that you should go for dry fasting for 30 days. <laughs> if some people, their trouble will not be solved until they go for 30 days in dry fasting. But the grace that he gave me, if it is seven days, follow it. You remember when he saw Bartimaeus, he looked at Bartimaeus, what can I do for you? The man said he wanted to do what? To see. He said, receive your sight. He saw another blind man. And he called that one. And Jesus brought that one closer to himself. And he spat, he used his saliva, he put it on the ground. He made a mud and he put it on his face. He added more to his blindness. And Jesus now told him, Now go here, from here, to war not. You will see what are there. Go and wash yourself. Ah, if you can say amen, your case will be easy. <laughs> Bartimaeus' case was so easy. That of our that blind man was difficult. You go. I will assure you, if that blind man is moving from here to war not, with added blindness, he may not return alive. But Jesus said, The water that will clean your eyes that you will see is not here. He had a motto his blindness and said, Go as far as one north from Colombia before you can get that water to wash your face. But Bartimaeus said, What can I do? He said, Receive your sight. Somebody that will say loud in heaven today, Your miracle will be easy. People of God here, I say your miracle will be busy. Amen. I've told you, we can be classmates, we cannot be grace mates. We can be age mates, 
We cannot be grace made. So you don't need to envy those who are enjoying grace. Just anchor around them and grace will flow in your life. Today, you will enjoy grace. So you need the Holy Ghost baptism. Until the Holy Spirit baptism came upon Peter, Peter could not fulfill destiny. Oh, Matthew 16, who do, then whom do you say that I am? You are the son of God. Ah, Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this one to you. They left the place now. They came, Matthew 17, Transfiguration Mountain. When Peter saw Moses that he read about, saw Elijah, transfigure, saw Jesus, transfigure, flesh came over him again. He said, let us abide here. And make three tabernacle here. One for you, one for Moses. And one for Elijah. He was off track. Then Jesus looked. And then you look at that. When Jesus was arrested. Peter was using everything to swear. Did I know this man? I've never met Jesus in my life. Let me tell you. If you don't have the Holy Spirit. You will deny Jesus all over and all over again. You need the power of God. Come on say I need the power of God. Say it louder. And the Holy Spirit is standing on two legs. Somebody say two legs. I can't hear you. I'm already doing like teacher. Say two legs. Say two legs. Say it again. Shout it out. Say it louder. Your legs will not be cut off. On two legs. One. Nine gift. Two. Nine fruit. Why is it nine nine? Nine gift, nine fruit. The nine gift will show you how. These are giftings. The man on keyboard is a gift. The man on guitar is a gift. The man on bandset, a gift. We can look at that place. We think you can beat it. When you're not gifted, you can't do it. So gifts will show you how. At least not everybody is sitting here. But they are here and every eyes can see them. Gift will show you how. To. But the nine fruit will stabilize your life. Gift will show you I'm a pastor. It's gifting. But what about character? What your gift cannot do well or do, it is the character that will sustain you. They invited me somewhere. And they came to pick me at the airport. They said, by the grace of God, you are coming for seven days fasting and prayer with us. And from the airport, they said, man of God, what are the kind of food we should be preparing for you? Ah, I said, is it not You told me fasting, huh? If you now load me with food, and the congregation are fasting, and I begin to jump from one place to the other, even if the congregation didn't know that I, I have eaten, the woman that prepared the food. <laughs> we tell them, we don't mind that man. You see him jumping here, doing acrobatic. He's loaded. <laughs> and do you know what the pastor did? The pastor laughed. He laughed. And I said, excuse me, what happened? He said, ha, I brought a pastor last year. He said, right from the airport, he started telling me, do you have shawarma with tomatoes and sardine? He said he got home and told his wife that this one came for food competition. That was the last time they invited him. Now look at it. He was gifted, but the character destroyed him. One day we invited a minister. We put him as our church at that level. Could just offer a particular room in an hotel. And we paid. Everybody got that money and we put him there. You know what? By the time we went to that room to visit him, he has shed himself into another bigger place. Telling us, I am bigger than where you put me. In a simple way. The hotel people called us and said, your guest has left the room you put him. And he has put himself in what he thought he belongs. By the time he left, 
They touched right into debt. That was the last time he came there. He is gifted. Are you hearing me? But he lacks character. And every door gift we are opening, character, lack of character, we are closing it up. Deal with your character. God can give you gift, but you beat character yourself. Yes, because the calling, the gift and the calling of God is without what? Repent about character, you beat it. You beat it by learning about Christ. How does Jesus rehearse under tension? How does Jesus care for the poor? How does Jesus relate with the children? How does Jesus undo families? Many of us doesn't know that Jesus loves family. If he doesn't love family, he wouldn't have followed Peter to the mother he loves house to go and heal the woman that was suffering from fever. Jesus was at the marriage, canon of Galilee. He is so stable, but according to the scriptures, you must have when you labor for the gift. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. Please rush that. For the Bible says, For the gift of God is given to every man to profit. It is pro profitability. God is into profitability. How many can I tell us? Now we have series of things of how character like close doors upon people. I pray for you. You will not use your hand to close the door all over your life. I want to plead to you. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with that. And then you go in there and I begin to talk. Those are the things we pray for. Please move very fast my friend. The verse 8 what is he saying? Quickly. God bless you. He said to some is giving the spirit of word of knowledge, the some word of wisdom, there are about nine. For one is given spirit of the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge of the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, gift of healing by the same spirit. And then he goes on quickly, another working of miracles, another one prophecy, to another one designing of spirit. Ha! Ah, devil and demon will not stay in your family. You must be able to discern what is going on in the house? I look at people here. It's many people I see them and it's like a remote control. Something is remoting lives and destinies of people. Every spirit that is remoting your family, remoting your life. Today, today, they will catch fire. Every spirit that I don't know what to do. You must know what to do. Every spirit I don't know what to do. I am tired. I am tired. I am tired. When somebody is shouting, I'm tired. I'm tired. Spirit of death will be knocking. I can't go again. I can't go. The spirit of suicide will be crying up and down. I am tired. I am tired. I don't know what to do. You must know what to do. Unto us a son is being given. Unto us a child is born. The Bible say, and government will be upon his shoulder. Isaiah 9 says, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Your life will explain wonder. His name shall be called Counselor. That's why you need the Holy Spirit. You must know what to do. You will hear a voice behind you telling you what to do. Counselor. That means you will not be granted. In the journey of life, you will not be granted. His name shall be called the Almighty God to deal with every power. Almighty power hangs with him. Every small, small power frustrating your life and destiny. Today, they will catch fire. His name shall be called the everlasting father. He will not abandon his children. His name shall be called the prince of peace. Ah, number one, those five names will come to pass in your life. You will see wonders. You will see glorious hand of God. You will see the power of God. If you are saying him and say louder. You know that is that is gift. Just let us just run. I will round up now. Round. Is somebody getting blessed? Please. Galatians chapter five. Okay. Just just see the fruit of the spirit. May the Lord give you character. Galatians chapter five. Please look at nineteen to twenty-two quickly. Please. 
And as we round it up, I want to plead to you. I mentioned three encounters. Can you remind me the encounters? Number one, salvation. Number two, number three. Those of you who have the three, can you say big amen to that? You need those three to be sure of making heaven. To be sure of making heaven. My time is running. Please, Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. I would love to read it. Galatians 5, 19. Can you give it to us, please? It talks about the works of the flesh. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery. Fornication uncleanness, lasciviousness, okay, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like which I have also told you in time past that they will do such things shall not hear the kingdom of God. That is why we have to follow Galatians 2.20. If we identify, Moses couldn't get to the promised land. Tell me the problem. What was the problem? I can't hear you louder. Mm -mm, say it louder. Let's nay hunger to the cross. If you say people will not provoke you, it's a lie. People will provoke you all over and all over. Your style of maturity comes in. How do you be hard under provocation? There are some you will do. You go away with it. But the time is coming, you will not go away with it. The Lord has been tolerating Moses. Yes. God used his finger. The finger of God. Finger of God. To write laws. But because Moses was angry. He broke it. I told people. Oh Bible didn't say we shouldn't get angry. But there must be a limit. If I told us. He said. You can get angry. But see not. When anger comes to a level of breaking things, you can break life. There must be a limit. Go now to Moses. Speak to the rock. Speak instruction. But because of provocation, Moses said, can we give you water? Can we? Moses Telling people that he and God, eh, can we give you water? And he took rod and struck the stone. He never knew that it was ancient of days that he struck. Lord brought out water. But the Lord told him, climb up. Look at the promised land. You will never get there. For those of us who say amen, anger will not take glory away from us. Amen. Let me tell you, in the pastoral work that we do, eh, I've wept many times with attitudes of people in the church. I will cry. Physical cry. Why am I crying? I can't fight. Because the moment you are sanctified, the garment of your strife is broken. Do you know why? Somebody say why. He is the shepherd. You are the sheep. The sheep doesn't have horns. So they don't ram. The sheep. Doesn't have teeth. They don't tear. And the sheep. Doesn't have claws. You know why? They don't have teeth so they don't bite they don't have claws so they don't tear where is the strength of the sheep it's in the shepherd Jesus the shepherd of our life is the one that fights for the sheep he will fight for you 
You can fight for yourself. I can't fight for myself. That's what made me to cry. Because every garment of strife and fighting has been destroyed. And the way he does it, you don't know the way we do it. At times he will do it by promoting you. That's why David said, he presented a table before me in the presence of what? May your glory come out. In the Kaporia Manu de Hedi Kepare de Ketori Yende Poria Saha. Every power that is standing against your glory, today they will catch fire. I want to quickly write this one down. There are agents of your transformation. Number one, Jesus is an agent of your transformation. Jesus came to transform us. That's why I can stand before you. I can, I, I, you see me telling you how terrible I was. But the Lord transformed my life. Today I respect the priest. I respect the church. I respect the people of God. But it was not like that. Jesus transformed me. The Lord will transform your life. That's why I say if anyone is in Christ, he say what? A new creature. Oh, things are. We can talk about it. Our story. It has passed away. Your sorrow will pass away. Your weeping will pass away. Your affliction will pass away. If you are saying him and say loud and clear. They are pass away. Jesus is an agent of transformation. Number two, the word of God is an agent of your transformation. If you are outside the word of God, your life will not be transformed. Jesus said, John 6, 63, the word that I speak to you, they are life and they are spirit. Genesis chapter 1, God created the heaven and the heart. The heart was without form. It was void. Darkness was upon the surface of the deep. And the spirit of the Lord is moving upon the waters. And God said, God said, let there be light. Because the word of God is a transformating word. It's a power to turn situations around. Things are tough for you, but God said your tomorrow shall be well. Uh, you can't see the way how, but the Lord is telling you, your present suffering cannot be compared to your glory. If you know you will have a glory, say amen to that. You will not labor in vain. I can't hear you louder. Shout it better. Say it louder. Number three, men of God are ordained for your transformation. Men of God are ordained. Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 11, having made captivity captive, he gave gift unto her men. To some he called apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. For the perfection of the saint, for the work of the ministry, is to perfect our life. God raised men of God to perfect our life and the Lord warned us Hebrews 13, 17. They that is placed over you, listen to them because they will give account about your soul. Let them do it with joy, not with sorrow. Obey them that have the rule and submit yourself for the watch for your souls as they that must give account that they may view it with joy and not with grief. That is unprofitable to you. I told the congregation, and as I've been writing my biography already, I know those who are troubling me in the church. I, I, I wrote the uh, Peter Paul too wrote, he blessed Priscilla, he brings, but he remembered Alexandra the ghost meeting. The black, Abbe, what did he tell him? He said he troubled me too much. He released word upon him. Those who encourage us, we write it in our heart. Those who trouble us, we know them. May you have a good record. Men of God are chosen. Then number four, fire prayer. Prayer, don't just pray. Please condition in this country and everywhere. Every, every nation has their peculiarity. This is a very beautiful place, but the forces that are moving are different from the one affecting us in Africa. I told the people where we are praying, I said, I am rugged because there are rugged demons. <laughs> And where you think the things are, they are sophisticated. There are forces. It's the same scriptures. Anywhere in the whole world. That is why progress are not the same. Because there are principalities. Oh my God, you will carry power. 
If Jesus can send Matthew 11, 12 from the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God so far. What about now? How do we stop COVID that is going? This is summer. We have the sun, we have the environment, we have everything. But why is it increasing now? Then what will happen when we get to winter? Ah, say for your hand. Every spirit of COVID will die. In the Kaporia Bakutibin Handaha, every spirit of COVID will die. Every appearances and demons, because the whole world is waiting for the church to rise. They are waiting for the church. Every manifestation of COVID, whatever the name it is called, because Jesus is exalted above every other name, that are the mention of the name of Jesus, every name must bow. We declare with every brethren in living spring, spirit of COVID, bow. Bible says, surely he has borne our griefs, he has carried our sorrow. Chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his waves, we are here. By his waves, I say by his waves. Can you imagine the kind of body I said I had where we are praying? That let the result be negative. Can you imagine that kind of a body? Can you imagine, God forbid, if it is identified like that, can you imagine that I will not have right to be here today? Can you imagine? I was telling my sister, I said, where will I be hit? You mean I won't be able to embrace you? He goes, ah! Embrace for where? <laughs> he said, for where? I, he said, I will have taken your bed under, not on the surface. Down. Then uh, it will be. They have to be using uh, phone to call you. Are you ready for food? <laughs> and then they be throwing your food to you, like somebody who has leprosy. <laughs> and I want you to imagine many things that will have been destroyed. I will have been psychologically down. Nowhere to go. Gospel remains. I can't get out. All the things that are lying for the weak, you can't do anything. Ah, uh, please let your man. You will not forsake. Amen. Tell yourself, say, I will not forsake. I can't hear you say, I will not forsake. Say it louder. Say, I reject any spirit of COVID over my life, over my destiny. In the name of Jesus, let somebody shout amen to that. You have to carry fire prayer. Every member now should join intercessory prayer. Every member. All of us should be intercessors. We must be able to pull it down. In this area, your life will bring joy. And finally, you must be filled with the Holy Ghost fire. If you don't have the Holy Ghost fire, you can't go far. You must be filled with the Holy Ghost fire. We need it upon our children. I'm going to pray for our children. I've seen several things everywhere. Ah, your children will be joy to you. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit that wants to take our children away from the church. And take our children away from us. That spirit will cast fire. In the name of Jesus. I can hear you loud and clear. Shout it loud and clear. Say it loud. Your children will be great. Your children will be great. Your teenager will know direction. In the name of Jesus, you will not have sleepless nights on your children. Those who have lost, Holy Ghost will direct them inside. In the name of Jesus, shout your amen. Please, I want to plead to you. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 says, Live in peace with all men. Follow peace. It didn't say sit down for peace to follow you. You follow peace. I wish my wife is here. If you have misunderstanding, if anybody tells you that I know misunderstanding in home is a liar. Your foundations are different. You are not trained the same way. Things are different. And I, I will tell my wife, 
Jesus may appear tomorrow. He may appear before tomorrow. Let's, let's talk now. And we talk in simplicity. <laughs> I ask people, how do you pray when you keep malice? Christians even call it holy malice. They will greet you in the church, but they will not sit beside you. You greet them, they will use air to answer. They will say, at least I answer you. Read your Bible very well. Many Christians will miss heaven. Mention the nine fruit, and I pray for you now. Number one, joy. Number two, if you are producing peace, you will use everything within your power to look for peace. Peace. Long suffering. You can hear that word, long suffering. Anyone that lacks the fruit of long suffering can't do anything to the ultimate in his life. You can't achieve anything. If you are long, so like long suffering as a man, a woman, everybody, even children, there will be no home. Long suffering. Ability to endure for one another. It takes humility. Long suffering. Mention another one. Gentleness. Gentleness is not just quietness, but ability to have a listening ears. You will be able to have ears. You see it in the life of pastors. It's a bachelor of pastors. Listening ears to the slow learners and those who are fast learners. Gentleness. Yes? Meekness. That's humility. Ability to lead, to bow for her. Meekness. When you look at sheep, you will see that sign of meekness. Even physical sheep. Sheep doesn't walk alone. It is goat that walk alone. And goat suffer alone. Sheep always flock. When there is food, you will see them. They will shift for one another. They won't rush. It is goat who will rush. But the sheep will, will, will shift for one another. To eat together. Mention the next one. Temperance. Self-control. It's a very powerful. Self-control. When a man lacks self-control, you can eat anywhere. You can do things anywhere. Self-control. What again? Eh? Faith. Very powerful. Fruit. The Bible said the just will live by the just will live by Galatians 3.11. The just will live by faith. Huh? Galatians 3.11. Abacut 2.4. The just will live by his faith. Romans 1.17. The just will live by faith. Daily faith production is different from the gift of faith. Mention the last one. Patience. Lift up your two hands above your head. Revelation chapter 20 verse 5 verse 15 says for anyone that has his name not written in the book of life shall be cast into the lake of fire. You will not end up in the lake of fire. God will never regret over your life and over your destiny. I bless you in the name of God the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Can you say big amen to that? I believe today's service has been of great blessing to you. We would like to stay in touch with you so please connect with us on all our social media platforms at RCCG LSMC on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Please remain blessed and we'll see you next time.